I just looked at a graphic on uh, the monitor. I was looking up at Fox News, and there was a graphic that someone posted, and it said that uh, last month the United States, uh, through its Air Force, dropped 36% fewer bombs on ISIS than it had in the previous month. So here's ISIS going around Europe, staging all of these dramatic attacks and maiming and killing people left and right, and all of the tough talk from Washington is, have you hugged a Muslim today? Uh, and, and, well, some of them may be quite huggable. I'm not going to argue. You know, we said yesterday, you always got to qualify this. They're not all bad people. Only a few hundred million out of some, what, billion and a third or whatever it happens to be around the world. Seven minutes after 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. So as the attacks intensify around the world on these soft targets the terrorists like, we actually are taking um, a break from attacking them. There's a story at Wall Street Journal today written by a writer named Sarab Ameri. And when I say that not all Muslims are bad, I would put this individual in the good column. Global's, uh, Global Jihad's deadly calendar. And what he has done is he has taken the last 10 days. And he shows us that on each of the last 10 days, there has been a terrorist attack related to ISIS and possibly al-Qaeda, but now ISIS seems to be the big gun in that, that crowd. There has been a terrorist attack somewhere around the world. Tourists at the Ivory Coast who were, who were shot up and killed while they were on the beaches and in a resort hotel. Uh, he's also pointing out where these attacks have taken place in Europe and in, in, in Asia. And he, he, he literally breaks this down. You pick a day on the calendar, there is an attack, a jihadi attack somewhere around the world, if not multiple attacks. So the question becomes, what are people going to do about it? Other than say, well, you know, it's the religion of peace and we can't tar each and every one of these people with the same brush. We have to find ways to give them good jobs because, is that what the president said? Uh, the fact that, you know, they... They just don't have, uh, you know, good jobs over there in the middle of the desert. That's why they're so nasty and angry. They've lived over there in the middle of some of these deserts now for millennia. My, my friends, it's not like they're walking around. Back in 1543, they weren't saying, you know, if I only had a job as a computer programmer, I would not have to go on jihad. It did not happen. It's 37. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, at newsradio1310.com. And the, the poor that have been brought into Europe, who are now living in all of these ghettos and all of these European cities, they still have satellite dishes up on their roofs. I don't think they had that if they were out with the Bedouin tribes. So their lives are still better, and they're all on the dole. So they've got groceries, the rent is paid, the heat is paid. They've got television, all the television they want, and yet they still have to go out and, and kill people at random and just ca cause as much mayhem as possible. There is a Belgian who, uh, this, this is a headline that the Daily Caller has, uh, and the Daily Caller picked this up. A liberal in Belgium was tweeting yesterday and said, quote, I've been pretty leftist my entire life, but I am done defending Islam, unquote. People of Europe, no matter what their political background, are now starting to have the wool pulled away from their eyes. And everyone says, well, you know, this is going to lead to a new fascist Europe and the nationals. No, it's going to lead to a safer Europe. Uh, you, you know, to, to conflate safety with fascism seems to me. Now, John Kasich will sit there and say, well, you know, we need to have more uh, surveillance in this country and spy on more people to prevent this stuff from happening. Sure, he's a big statist Republican, and that's his solution for everything. The fact of the matter is, though, if we don't keep importing these people here, then we don't have a need to worry about them. And you don't have to go spying on everyday average Americans. We have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley, a top story. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, just a, a little background on vetting these people that are going to come in or are coming in. I had an incident with local police in the area a month ago on a break-in situation. The officers came out. They looked at the house, one thing and another. I told them, haven't touched a thing. You know, you can take fingerprints. Nothing's been touched here forever. The prints you get should be good. The officer said, well, we won't take prints because if we took prints, it would be up to two years before we got any information back on them. We're that far backlogged on our, on our uh, forensic.
forensic uh, work that it would be two years before we ever got any information back. And uh, they were polite, but they weren't going to do anything. They turned around and walked off. So what kind of vetting procedure do we have locally for anybody if that's the kind of response yeah. you get? Yeah, and you know, and, and they're being very honest with you about that. The, the problem is it's the elected politicians at the top who keep trying to smudge all of these facts. I thank you much for the call, and I hope you can get that thing solved quickly. Uh, it sounds to me like, you know, when you're violated in that situation, hearing, I'm sorry, there's not much we can do about it for the next 24 months is a little bit on the heartbreaking side. You're up next, and you're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You know, in Europe, there's, they're awash with these refugees, and, and once they're there, they're never going to leave. They're just never going to leave. And, and we continue to do the same thing here. And I say to myself, we're going to have to deal with this somehow. They either learn to love America or they learn to know that we're serious. But you see, either one of those things seem plausible at this time. I, I have a big family, lots of children. And uh, I say to myself, God forbid that anything ever happen to my children or my grandchildren. It could happen. And we all act like it's just somebody else's problem. I'm telling you, that kind of delusional thinking is BS. Thanks, Bill. Hey, thank you much for the call. Um, I hope a few elected politicians are listening this morning. Uh, your constituency is calling. You're up next, and you're on the air on KLIX. Well, one of the one of the reasons they have such a backlog is they're so busy out on the streets trying to get generate income through victimless crimes instead of out there solving crimes. Victimless in the sense of what uh, uh, prostitution and the like, or no, no, I'm talking traffic violations and stuff where there's no no victim. Well, there was a there was a, a popular, and I don't know if it's been if they've dialed it back, but in the 1990s, it was quite popular in a lot of localities. Uh, they were under pressure to write a lot of tickets just to help with the local books. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, and you can't blame that on the police officers. Again, elected politicians are looking around saying, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, if we can prey on the people, that's what you call a parasite. Thank you much for the call, sir. You're next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Uh, Bill, we Americans have a terrorist on our payroll who was romancing terrorists in Cuba when the bombs went off in Brazil in Brussels. Government agencies chase down criminals, arrest and prosecute them at great expense, and put them in jail. Obama, who used to be Barry Sotero, has released hundreds of vicious uh, time ticking time bombs who can go back to raping, robbing, and attacking Americans and adult, uh, children and adults. Obama is not our friend. Thankfully, and I thank you for the call, thankfully he is only going to be with us a few more months. 915, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Look, the reason he, st he sat there and did the wave with uh, Ro Raul Castro yesterday, first of all, they're blood brothers when it comes to politics, uh, because he's already checked out. I mean, this is a guy who's no longer interested in being president of the United States. So, you know, going to the baseball park in Cuba is, it, 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 you know, relaxation, a little R&R, &R, and there'll be some more expensive vacations, and his daughters will get more $20,000 dressing gowns for state dinners. Ah. You know what? Living like royalty is a great thing, especially when you claim to be for the little guy. Piers Morgan, you may remember this guy. Um, I'm trying to find a nice way to describe him. He's a, he's a British fellow. For a while, he had a TV program on CNN where he used to get about 18,000 viewers per night. I think we do better than that here in mornings on KLIX. And he had a national platform. And, of course, he was constantly rambling on about how we should take everyone's guns away because in his country, uh, people can't arm themselves and therefore they're targets of terrorists. It's, that's the English, apparently, logic in all of this. But Mr. Morgan has had what you'd call an epiphany. Writing in his column, I happen to see the column this morning, but this is an abridged version from Daily Caller. And he's writing about the terrorist attacks, and he says, I'm sick of this, aren't you? And then he went on to talk about Donald Trump. Well, he said he was a man I never much cared for, but he said, you know what? He said, I think Donald Trump is right when it comes to terrorism. Morgan admitted that he found himself agreeing with Trump he interviewed Trump on his TV program yesterday morning in England. He said he found he agreed with him on some of his plans to demolish ISIS. Is he wrong, Morgan asked five times in his column after reeling off various seemingly reasonable thoughts 
Trump has on solving terrorism that involves Islamic extremists. So he's winning over some of these people, and, and, and oh, but we would be mean if we went in there and bombed them, and, you know, we might harm their families and collateral damage. Oh, my, oh, no, oh, oh. Well, we used to not be worried about those things prior to 1945. Uh, back then, we used to win wars and spectacularly uh, win wars. Today, it's like, oh, but somebody might not like it, you know, and, and, and the newspaper editors over at the New York Times, so uh, they won't like it, and then they won't like me, and I won't get invited to go out and drink champagne with them. 917. Mike McCall, congressman from Texas, has been a, a very outspoken individual when it comes to illegal immigrants pouring over the border in his home state. McCall is also talking, made an appearance last night, I th think with Greta Van Susteren on Fox, talking about this situation with Islam, which also, I mean, they're, they got to get into the country somehow, right? So impersonating someone swimming the Rio Grande may be the way to do it. It's really taking sort of a sixth century attitude and then using the Internet to sort of globalize jihad. It's the, that fact that they've had 40,000 foreign fighters pour in to Iraq and Syria and northern Africa, thousands of them into Europe, hundreds into the United States. It's the hundreds in the United States or those who could get in to carry out these attacks that concerned us greatly. When I spoke with the FBI earlier, it's this encryption idea, the idea that they can communicate in dark space like they did in Paris, like what I, I think probably happened here uh, in the Brussels case uh, that concerns us the most. If you can't see their communications, you can't stop it. I was in Belgium just last May meeting with counterterrorism officials, the Minister of Interior, and I can tell you the anxiety level is extremely high, particularly given the fact that the Muslim community is very segregated and is not assimilated with the rest of the culture, and out of that uh, breeds this radicalism uh, and terrorists. I'm going to leave you with this thought before the break. We'll pick this up, a, a more discussion about it on the other side. Wall Street Journal editorial today, the writer says, if ISIS has no regrets about killing 130 people in Paris, they wouldn't hesitate to murder many times that number if they could. What's missing isn't intent, the writer says, but the means. That may change as they expand their network of sleeper cells and lone wolf sympathizers in the West. And I'm going to tell you just how many of those sleeper cells may now be operating. You're going to be absolutely stunned, shocked, and irate. That's on the way. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News 1310.com. Hope you have a great day, by the way, if you have to run. Otherwise, stick around because it gets a little more exciting in just a few minutes. So how many of these people are coming in from, uh, from various countries as refugees or migrants, and how many of them are actually members of sleeper cells just waiting for their orders to create all sorts of mayhem in the countries where they arrive? Well, I'll give you the shocking details in just a moment. It's 924. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Do want to remind you, hearing this program, a lot of you do it every day, but if you're struggling to hear it, you need to give a telephone call to Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. In the medical building there at 1218 9th Street, she's in unit number two. The telephone number, 312-0957, or you can go online, mountharrisonaudiology.com. Hearing loss and dementia, she reminds you, are linked. Hearing loss becomes a great burden on the brain as you have to expend more time and energy to decipher what others are saying to you. Treating hearing loss reduces the strain and makes hearing more natural to keep your brain healthy by taking care of your hearing. 25 minutes after 9 o'clock, 38, Bill Colley with you on Top Story, News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, the Daily Caller has been uh, just a trove today on some of these stories related to Islamic terrorism. Leaked report. 90 suicide bombers potentially roaming Europe. Of course, they're recruiting others. The jihadi who masterminded the November Paris attacks told a friend he commanded 90, quote, kamikaze and waiting, unquote, terrorists who snuck into Europe by pretending to be migrants and refugees, a leaked international police report reveals. Oh, yeah, but there's a, there's a wonderful vetting process, and, and, and we just... We, we liberals pat ourselves on the back all the time because we asked them if they were terrorists, so they said no, and so it worked well. The report leaked to the New York Times. Of all places, the New York Times, which today has the usual editorial, oh, we stand with all of our dead brothers in Europe. But you know, this is no time to panic and go to war and take out the bad guys. No, 
No, we, we have to apologize to them some more for the Crusades and for our, our wonderful economies and manufacturing and all those things that made the Western world great. And we have to tell them that if, if it would make them happier, we will all submit to the sword. Well, it doesn't quite say all of that, but you know the direction they're heading at the New York Times, the Bible of American liberalism. The writer says the report leaked to the New York Times takes on new urgency after three explosions claimed by the Islamic State in Brussels left at least 31 dead. Now, the numbers have been bouncing around, uh, 31, 34, 27. I guess 31 right now is the most accurate. But they will go higher. Some of these people who are badly wounded will die. Uh, we've seen this happen before. We don't recommend that. We're not hoping for that, but it will happen, and the numbers will continue to climb. And it just, for all those people out there who say, well, you know, domestic terrorism really comes from grumpy old white men. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. And if we could only kill all of them off instead, uh, the world would be a better place. Johnny and Jimmy would be happier in their marriage, and then we could let in all of the Latinos, and they'll bring their wonderful culture here with all of their drugs, and we'll just have a... All right, we should qualify that. Donald Trump did, too, as well. They're not all dope dealers and rapists. Only several thousand. Or maybe a hundred thousand. Yeah, maybe a million. But, you know, you just got to learn to live with it because you got to be nice to these people. These are acceptable losses among the liberals who will tell you whenever there is a school shooting, liberals will tell you that one dead child is one dead child too many. But if it comes to 40 or 50 of you getting blown to bits by a suicide bomber or a homicide bomber or a crockpot left in the middle of the street at a marathon, those are acceptable losses because we don't want to hurt Ahmed's feelings. Europe's breeding ground for terror. This is from the Daily Signal today. Mike Gonzalez, the writer. The police who arrested the terrorists last week. Now, they knew that something like this was going to happen in response after his arrest. And you know what they did? They pretty much sat on their hands. Yeah, well, you know, there might be a terrorist attack, so we'll sit and wait and see. At times, he says, it seemed that they were fighting the neighborhood. The, the neighborhood's called Molenbeek, where he was staying. Some of whose residents threw missiles at them. In other words, they're going down the street trying to take this guy to custody. Windows are popping open up on the second and third floor, and the police are being pelted with all of this garbage. After the arrest, Belgium's interior minister remarked that he was surprised by how much help that Abdel Salam had uh, received. Uh, that would be the fellow who was arrested, the mastermind of the Paris attack. What? <sighs> there would have been a time if you went into a neighborhood and there were a lot of people there who were guests of your country, and if they were throwing rocks at you or bottles at you or Molotov cocktails at you or trying to distract you, you know, think about that. If you see a policeman making an arrest uh, today over on Blue Lakes Boulevard and you run up and jump on his back, you're going to be in serious trouble for that. Let's point out that that's obstructing his duty and he's not going to be happy. The prosecutor isn't going to be happy and you're going to be warming a jail cell for a while. Now, all of these people who are hurling all of these things out the windows at police who are trying to arrest a bloodthirsty killer, they're not even Belgians. Stick them on planes or in the holds of ships and get them the hell out of there. And if they complain about it, tell them they can, they can get out of the plane at any, any point they want over the Mediterranean Sea. Here's, here's a chute. Just, you know, open the door and you can go. Hope you can swim. And by the way, when you hit the water, it'll be like hitting concrete. You know what? You do that. And after you, 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 you forcibly remove a few of these people over their objections to the tune of a couple of hundred thousand, they might start to get the idea and some of them might start to play nicely. And if you take this Abdul Slam or whatever his name is and you go and you, you line him up against a wall and you ventilate him with a nice, I don't know, array of 50 or 60 shots, and you do that more often, you'll send a strong message in reply.